Well, it all started with the local police force uncovering a small terrorist sleeper cell on the island of Altus. They feared that they didn't have the proper knowledge or equipment to handle the threat. So as a result, an in cooperation with NATO, the 77 JSOC was sent to assist with gathering information and run point on the capture of the rebels within the identified cell. After first surveillance was done, we get in the lead on a person of interest known as Mr. Lazarus Elenaki, who is referred to the Ace of Spades in the report in front of you. We also got into the necessary intel that we needed to fully mobilize on the island. And with the support of our own special weapons and tactics division, we set up a number of raids to be executed in precise timing with one another. This was to take the cell leadership by surprise and to keep them from sounding the alarm about what was going down. On you, let's go. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. Going in. Good take down. Crystal clear. Body stairs. We clear. Moving up. Top floor Only clear. Side. Check that. Uh, northwest. Going in. Northwest. With Alpha and Charlie's squad raid, they managed to bring back intel on two new targets within the sleeper cell, later to be known as the Three of Clubs and the Joker. Delta squad returning back with the HVT, was called the Ace of Spades, to NATO interrogation, and that was incredibly useful for gathering further information on how the cell operates. In the meantime, Echo and Bravo squads we managed to return intel about the cell server farm, leading us to the next phase of the operation. A highly impressive first round for you and your men, Colonel. Well done. In regard to the server farm's location and the plan going forward, what was the next step for the 77th JSOG? Thank you, sir. After phase one was completed and we had the intel needed, we started to see the full picture. What the local police had thought to be a sleeper cell was in fact an anti-government terrorist cell that had been able to unfortunately successfully expand to become an island-wide armed rebellion. The Altus forces had at this time lost full control over both Pyrgos and Kavala, with hostages being held in Kavala City Hospital. And with the intel we found, we knew that they were planning to kidnap a high-profile electoral candidate before the upcoming government election. For a very long time, and with the utmost respect for our citizens. We also understand that you've been called in to help Sir Hector Torp. As he is a longtime supporter of NATO, we thank you for meeting this request, and well done for working with the AAF's mechanized division and Captain Caligaros. I can also see in the report that intel was gathered at the server farms. Can you tell us what went down in the next phase and what intel was recovered? Yes, sir. We knew that going forward that we were going to need the deployment of our electronic warfare operation. Therefore, we split our squads and gave them tasks to secure all the events that were unfolding on the island. With the intel from Bravo and Echo Squad in the last raid, we knew that there were server farms, but the locations were still unknown to us. But we didn't know what the failsafe they may have in place, so our electronic warfare operators specialists were needed. So we sent Echo Squad with the EWO operators to locate and secure the servers and what intel they may have. In the meantime, Alpha Squad was sent to facilitate a handover over three parliamentary candidates from the local police for, before the cells had the time to kidnap them. Next on the list was to keep Sir Trop safe, so Delta was sent to help with the AA Mechanized Division to oversee this. Our priorities were the hostage situation in Kavala City Hospital. We set up SWAT sniper slash spotter team to gather intel beforehand and with Charlie's squad sent there. This led us with the loose ends of two HVTs that needed to be captured. Bravo squad was sent there to secure the three of clubs and after further hunt for the Joker, as you can see in the report, they were both taken back alive to NATO interrogation. And with all the objectives in play and our squads on the ground executing the orders and tasking to perfection, we got the job done, quick and clean. With our EVO returning vital information on two new HVTs of the call signs, the King of Diamonds and the Jack of Hearts, both were tracked down to shown be on the island state of Tanoa, where our last phase commenced. So, as we can see in the report, the island of Tanoa was the last known place of the cell's operations. Did the hunt there go as planned? Sir, we had the rough location of the two targets, but we weren't sure what to expect. Once there, we found the rebels on the islands that were better armed and more adapted to fight. It later showed that they were connected to the paramilitary force that was trying to keep the two targets safe. So with no further ado, we sent out Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie Squad to 
track down the jack of hearts. We had tracked down to be near his office and to know our accounts PLZ, which he was CEO of. We knew he had a private hangar not far from the location, and that was most likely going to be his way to escape. We had a team strike both the locations at the same time, and under the cover of darkness and the strategic shutdown of the power in Georgetown, we managed to get in and get him out, with a few hiccups along the way, but nothing worse than that. Tell us more about this King of Diamonds person. Mr. Khan Elmas. Delta and Echo Squad were left to get the king himself. With the electronic warfare specialist, they had a ping coming off the island of Moragat, but it was weak, so tracking it down to the exact location was out of the question. This gave us a large area to search for Mr. Elmas, and going off the intel about possible escape routes of the island itself, our first step was to lock them down, and then moved two teams inland to perform a search and capture mission. Unfortunately, this ended with a prolonged firefight, but we managed to get a target out, and hereby I got confirmation that the main forces of the rebellion was dealt with. The rest was handed off to the local police force to clean up. And finally, to end this debrief, so I would like to speak freely. Unfortunately, I want to point out that there were many ways that the chain of operation had the possibility to go wrong. How we missed just one piece of the puzzle, we never had gotten the right intel to track down the whole cell and end the threat before we got out of hand. So the squad has my utmost respect, and I am proud to have led this unit to the victory that we're fighting so hard for. Our partners in the local police force and the AAF Mechanized Division has my thanks as well. And without their own specialized division, SWAT, and electronic warfare, we wouldn't have managed to get the intel that we needed. And it was great to see that they were utilizing such a great efficiency by our squad leaders. And to round off the squad leaders themselves, kept the team strong together, and work to meet our end's goal. Very well put, Colonel. And you have the right to be proud of your men. From what we have seen and from what you have told us, they had a hard and unfair task at hand, but they got past the obstacles and got the job done. As we knew they would. Again, you have our gratitude for dealing with this unseen threat, and I'm sure a few weeks of leave and rest is more than welcome by you and your men. Another job well done. Have your papers done by the end of day tomorrow. Thank you, sir. We all went into this operation not knowing what was going to happen, but we follow our code, adapt and overcome, and with great leadership, quick thinking, and outstanding teamwork, we managed to get to victory.